Hello, and welcome to the Summer 2015 Climate Briefing for Utah. My name is Eric Schoening, and I'm a meteorologist at the National Weather Service in Salt Lake City. This briefing will discuss the 2015 climate trends for meteorological summer, which is defined as the months of June, July, and August. Let's jump right in and start talking about temperatures from this summer. As many of you remember, June was quite hot in Utah, and as you can see here, it was anomalously warm across the entire western United States. Similar to the late winter and early spring, high pressure set up over the west and generally showed no signs of moving through the month of June. We put these numbers up here for the top five warmest Junes on record in Salt Lake City to show you that not only was this the warmest June on record, it broke the record by nearly two degrees, which is quite impressive. Taking a wider view across the state, Many northern Utah sites had their warmest June on record, including Logan, Pleasant Grove, and Scipio. It was a little cooler across southern Utah compared to normal, but June 2015 generally ranked in the top 10 warmest Junes on record in many southern sites. So, after that very hot June, many of us got to wondering, would this be the hottest summer on record? After all, the three hottest summers on record in Salt Lake City have all occurred since 2007. However, at least for the state of Utah, it was not meant to be. After the impressive heat continued for a few days into July, the large high press pressure shifted and never returned for an extended period of time, leading to a cooler than normal July across pretty much the entire southwestern United States. While this July wasn't anywhere near record-breaking cold, it was the coldest July in Salt Lake City since 1997. Temperature-wise, August is quite normal across Utah, with some places about a degree above normal, some a degree below normal, but in general about what you expect from August in the Beehive State. What does this all add up to for the entire summer? Generally, somewhat above normal temperatures across Utah for the three month period. However, this image only compares these temperatures to the 30 year climate average. How about if you compare the, these summer temperatures to the entire 140 year climate record at Salt Lake? Believe it or not, this was actually the 8th warmest summer on record in Salt Lake City when you look at mean temperatures. Despite a cool July and only slightly above normal August, the incredibly anomalous June really pulled the summer up in the overall rankings. As you can see, 6 of the 8 warmest Junes in Salt Lake City's recorded history have occurred in the last 15 years. Now let's move on to a summary of precipitation through the summer. Looking at the big picture for summer 2015 precipitation, a few features stand out, such as the much needed rainfall across the southern half of California, although much of that state remains in an exceptional drought, and very dry conditions across the Pacific Northwest that helped lead to a very active fire season up there. In Utah, much of the state was relatively close to normal for precipitation, with the exception of a very wet summer across the southeastern part of the state. Looking at it month by month, June was dry across northern Utah, which really helped with those record warm temperatures, while southeastern Utah was quite moist. July was generally wet across most of the region, while August had near normal precipitation on the whole across Utah. In summary, the summer season got off to a very warm start in June, and that record breaking month really helped make the summer overall warmer than average. However, Utah did get a cold and wet July to cool things off a bit and a fairly average month of August. So now we're sure you're wondering, what are we expecting in the fall? As you've probably heard, an El Nino has developed, which means that ocean temperatures in the equatorial Pacific are anomalously warm. This El Nino is forecast to strengthen heading into the fall and winter, and climate forecasters can use this pattern to improve their skill in the seasonal forecasts. There are many trends that we would expect with a strong El Nino, including a wetter than average season in Southern California and the desert southwest. Sure enough, the Climate Prediction Center says that there is a greater than 50% chance that Arizona and Southern Utah will have a wet fall, with a potential that the wetter than normal weather will extend across the entire state of Utah. There is also a greater than 33% chance that Utah will be warmer than normal through the fall months. Thanks for watching! If you have any questions, feel free to send us an email. You can also like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Have a great day.